Hi guys, I'm Maya Jama and I am the Football Virgin. I'm on a journey to learn everything I can about the beautiful game. Please keep leaving me your suggestions telling me what I need to do to become a football fan because I can't do this journey alone. I met some crazy fans when I went to watch the Champions League final. Which made me think about the extreme fans, you know, the ones that never miss a game. Well, I thought I should go and meet some and get some tips. Chris Hunter left me a great comment. He said, you should go and meet John Portsmouth Football Club Westwood. He's nuts. And Ellis Hampton said, Johnny Westwood at hashtag Pompey. So I've looked him up and he definitely seems pretty extreme. This guy loves his team so much, he's even changed his middle name to Portsmouth Football Club. So I figured if anyone can teach me a thing or two about being a football fan, it's him. So I'm here in Rainy Petersfield to meet probably one of the most recognisable football fans in Britain. Okay, so I'm here in John's front room, which is pretty much a shrine of Portsmouth. Your house is amazing. How long did it take you to collect everything you have in here? Uh, a lifetime, really. There's stuff from when I was a kid. There's still loads more in boxes and bags yeah. and stuff everywhere. Do you remember like how old you were when you got your first maybe scarf? No, or? I can't remember the first thing I got. All I remember is I was about th I was 12, 13, yeah. and I wasn't a football fan up to that stage. And that lot down the road, scummers. We were in the FA Cup. My mate was at school and he was a Pompey fan. Everyone was taking the mickey over. And I thought, oh, I want to say that's my local club. And anyway, I got all the gear and all that sort of stuff. And I went to my first game, Boxing Day 76. I was blown away by the atmosphere and the passion, yeah. the raw passion of Pompey was just unbelievable. I yeah. knew from that first moment that's what I wanted for the rest of my life. So, how does being this crazy football fan change your life, like your everyday life? It's a passion. It's difficult to describe if you're not a football fan. If you get that passion, it is something that. It's in your blood. You can't. Uh, you can't actually describe it. I mean, football represents where you're from, and Pompey's like a working-class city. People in Pompey like their football and their beer. So you'd never leave a match then, because I was at a match, and as soon as the other team started losing, people left. That's not something you'd ever oh, do. Oh no, not in Pompey. Don't do that. We're in, sometimes we're a little bit in late for games because of the pub and all that sort of stuff. But yeah. You never miss the end because that's when they need you more than anything. Because it's the end of the game. That's when a lot of goals are scored, and that's the important bit. In fact, when when Pompey are losing. That's when Pompey fans are at their best. Yeah. We, are, we, we sing more when we're losing, because that is what football's all about. That is actually the definition of a supporter. You support the team. It's easy to support a team when they're winning. They actually needed your support when they to weren't To them on well. and boost them yeah. to carry on. Like, has anyone ever said anything bad about how far you've taken your passion? Oh, well, yeah, yeah. Lots of people think I'm off my head. Yeah. <laughs> Quite true, really. How do you I mean, deal with that? Does it bother you? It doesn't bother me because at the end of the day, everyone le leads the life they choose, and if you're not harming anyone else, then it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. Really matter. Yeah. Yeah, my family think I'm off my tree. When I changed <laughs> my name by Depot, they thought I was off my tree. Yeah, tell me about that. What made you change your name? Like, it's a crazy thing to do. I'm so proud of the club, I'm so proud of the city, and uh, it was just an extension of my passion, having the Portsmouth Football Club in. But I'd only been married about two months. I, I didn't tell my missus. I just come home and said, Oh, by the way, I've had my name changed. And she goes, What? Yeah, to Portsmouth <laughs> Football Club. How did and she react? She went out the wall. But I said, well, It's my name. But the funniest thing was when I had my kids, we had to go down and uh, register the children. And of course, they asked for my name. And I said, Portsmouth Football Club. And there was this really serious woman. <laughs> I can she imagine. looks over her glass and she goes, This is a very serious situation. I said, That's my name. My ex missus went bright red. It's funny, actually. Yeah. You've got to follow your heart, follow your passion. That's what I've done. Because you say you don't know nothing about football yeah. and you've become a football fan. Yeah. Now, the best way to be introduced to football is to come and watch lower leagues. Because you're going with fans who are supporting it for the right reasons, i.e., they're not going for the glory. Because in the Premiership, half the fans are just there because they're winning. And football's not about winning, it's about going to watch a game of football on a Saturday afternoon, having a few beers with your mates. If you win, it's a bonus. If you lose, you're at the booze. <laughs> but the whole object is you to get be. Get pissed if it, you lose it. Yeah. But it's to be part of something. Yeah. Part of that special feeling, belonging. It's like a second family. 
You've got your family at home, then you've got your football family. Would you be able to show me around and show me bits of your yeah. that you collected? Yeah, I'd show bits and bobs, because there's so much I don't know what to choose. This is one of my favourite photos, because when we beat Scummers 4-1, 24th of the 4th. I mean, that was the best day of my life when we beat them, until we obviously we won the cup final. Yeah. Was this you in a magazine here? Oh, that's in a magazine or some sort of, um, some local magazine they come in. There's my father, bless him. Okay. At that side of the shop. With the bookshop. Yeah, it's brilliant, because the last thing I see at night is Pompey, and the first thing I see in the morning, I wake up, it's Pompey. Yeah. But, I mean, if I'm honest, look at it, it's like a nine-year-old's bedroom. <laughs> bedroom. I don't think there's anything that you don't have other than your kitchen floor. A little bit of cut. These are offcuts out of the... Out of fat and part, bits and bobs, cups. I've God knows how many cups I've yeah, got, wow. mugs and all nice. that sort of stuff. I've even had my toilet seat done into a pompey. But this is my favourite Southampton tissue paper. Oh, to wipe your bum on? Yeah, to wipe my bum on, but I only use, <laughs> use that for special occasions. <laughs> I should start charging people for tours. <laughs> okay, so you've got animals in here. These are budgies. What are their names? One's fat and end, one's pompy, and I had to wait to get blue and white budgies. Mm. I had to have them. And you've got cats as well. We can see one here. What's this I've got one? four cats, each pompy. I've got another one called Chimes, another one called Fatten, and another one called Play Up. Could you please like explain each tattoo? Obviously, Help for Heroes. Yeah. Got to have that. Oh no, that's Help for Heroes. <laughs> but then I did my own version, Help for Weirdos. That's me on a, nice. on a stretch over with me out on being a din. <laughs> Grab my belly button, footprints. And underneath it says Portsmouth Naval Patrol. I've got one on my head that says Pompey the best and the head of the rest. Portsmouth to the die my chest. Right. And I've got them on various other bits of my body, which I won't mention. <laughs> oh, I They're only very small toes. Yeah, no, well, <laughs> if I became a Pompey fan, yeah. would you get a football virgin tattoo? Yeah, yeah cool. Yeah. yeah? No problem at all. OK, so for me, as I don't really know much about football at the moment, and I want to be a football fan, if you could give me three main things that I'd need to do to be a football fan, what would... One thing I can say, come to Fountain Park, watch Pompey. You'd, you, you'll become a Pompey fan overnight. The amount of people I've taken to football who weren't football fans, they come to Pompey and they've been, football fan, they've been Pompey fans for life. Obviously, you've got a bit of drink. Can you drink? drink? A lot. I, can, I can drink a bit. I've started drinking beer since we've been doing this. Cool. And uh, obviously, sing as loud as you can. But Same. be passionate, but it's got to be from the heart. Would you be able to sing us the Pompey chant? Fly up, Pompey! Pompey, fly up! <laughs> okay, wow, how amazing was he and his house? I think I've got a long way to go before I even come half as obsessed with football as he is. John gave me some great advice. He told me how important it is that you support your local team. And a lot of you left comments saying the same thing. Ryan Gameson said, support your local team where you live. Don't be a glory hunter. So I'm going to my hometown of Bristol. I'm not saying I'm going to support either of the Bristol teams. No, I'm going to do some research. So Bristol fans, I need your help. Please leave comments. Let me know where I need to go, who I should meet, which team's better. And you never know, one of you could end up being my Bristol tour guide. So subscribe to Copper Nighty and I will see you in Bristol. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have another go because usually second time's lucky for me. Take two. Just warming up. Just warming up, let's go. All right. Was Wait, that one what was that for? That was four. That was two, three and a half and a knee. Give me that counts. <laughs> knees. All counts. Knee, yeah. Office.